In this one, I'm going to take one of those NP11 batteries for that beta movie, which is completely dead, will not charge. And I'm going to try and fit in some nickel metal hydrate batteries recycled from an old alarm panel. I'm going to have to add some because I'm going to need uh, eight to do it. But I think I can cram eight into this case and make it work. Let's check it out. So I think in this video, I'm going to try and take one of these NP11 battery packs which would have eight uh, sub-C cells in them and put some nickel metal hydrate packs. This is a six cell and I've got another two cells. So I'll have the same number of cells. We're gonna open up one of these packs and see whether I can hook up one of these or a couple of these to try to rebuild the battery pack. It looks like it should be able to fit inside. I should be able to cram eight of these cells in in place of the original eight, which are smaller cells. We're going to open up the pack first. I'm just going to get in here with a pair of, uh, break the pack open with some side cutters here. And we'll see that these have NICAD cells. There's eight of them in here. We'll just remove these cells. And we have to reattach these terminals, but um, I think I should be able to probably fit a bunch of these in, and I should be able to get them to to attach. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the positive lead from this pack to the negative lead of this battery here, so that I can create eight cells in series. Now I just need to connect my negative terminal to the negative terminal that's going to be here. I'm just going to take the terminals off the bottom of the batteries here. And uh, we'll have to probably glue these in with some hot glue or, or something, but let me just remove the terminal. Together. Hopefully, I can get them back in here without them. Being a problem. So, what I've done is I've used JB Weld to, or Cold Weld, same thing. It's a two part epoxy that's reinforced with steel. I'm just using this stuff, which is called Cold Weld. Steel reinforced Cold Weld. Uh, it's the same thing as JB Weld, just without the price of JB Weld. Same thing. So I've used this. I'm going to let it set up. Once it's set up, we'll attach the wires and see if we can stuff all those cells in there and see if it will accept the charge. It should because it's, these are nickel metal hydrate batteries that I'm putting in. You know, they're the same, quite the same capacity as the original. But uh, the original was a 9.6, 1000 milliamp hour, and this is 1600 milliamp hour so uh, we should have adequate capacity to rebuild at least one of these packs I got a couple of them here but we'll try to rebuild one to see if it works if that works then I can rebuild another because I've got lots of these cells these came out of old alarm systems that were being recycled and they're mostly still good positive terminal is this one so let's just connect up the positive terminal And 
and of course a negative terminal. find a way to get these cells to sit in here with the top cover on which shouldn't be that difficult uh, they should actually go on kind of like like that I should be able to close this up and uh, see if it will charge if it works I'll glue it back together but let's see if it goes into the charger and instigates charging goes in like that and it indicates that it is indeed the charging light is on so you can probably see the charging light is on so let's let the battery charge and see whether it'll power up the camera there is a, a temperature cutout on the pack that I put in just like the originals here had a, a temperature cutout so that if they were to overheat it'll stop the charging uh, then the new pack I put on the first one that's sealed has one of these on it already So I haven't defeated any of the circuit protection. These are just regular sub C cells with paper sleeves on them as you can see I remember I used to get these battery packs rebuilt. There was a place in town that did them and I had uh, I had several NP ones rebuilt, but uh, I don't know that they do these anymore, but they used to rebuild them all the time for me Okay, the batteries finished charging Moment of truth, is it going to power up the camera? Let's find out. I'll take some pictures with it now that I can walk around with a totally portable camera. It weighs about 12 pounds or 10 pounds or whatever this thing weighs. It's heavy. It's heavy for a single piece. Well, my rebuilt battery pack is a success. I'm going to try the uh, GCS-1 and we'll uh, see if that works any better. If we look at the two of them side by side, they are almost the same size. Battery goes in on this one down here. And again, I don't know how the battery contacts are in this one but we'll see if it works let's see if it'll open up I heard it click so that's a good sign let's see if it'll open up and accept the tape which it does so we'll see how this one records Or if it records still, because you know it's been a few weeks since I've I've run this thing. You know how these old things are when they sit around for a little while, they tend to break. But we'll try some shooting on this one and see how this one looks. Unfortunately, this one does not want to cooperate today. It just records for like five seconds and stops. So I guess something else has gone wrong with this piece of crap. Just sitting around for a few weeks after I got it going. Well not too worried I have one that works so I'm recording that on the beta movie with the rebuilt battery pack as I get the scroll out this great and look like an absolute idiot carrying around the camera that's as big as this thing is but I'm saying it could like, make me look more foolish as if I was picturing it off a full size VHS camera Love the comet tails from the tube. 
I do have to admit, I There's do like the, I do like the quality of the tube better than the first generation CCDs. That's for sure. Stay shop, what's that? That hadn't hadn't been invented yet. Either had autofocus, so the cameraman was responsible for keeping things in focus. Our zoom is working. That's nice. Zoom out. Zoom back in. And the zoom in is taking its time, but it's going. My belt is probably a little bit weak. But it is zooming. Of course, with manual zoom, you can always zoom at whatever speed you want. I can control the color on the player as well, right? It has three color settings, so. Color level one, color level two, color level three. Hmm, I'm out of focus, even though in the eyepiece I was. So obviously my diopter wasn't set quite right because that was sharp as a tack in my eyepiece. And yet, the focus was out on the tube, and that was another drawback to the optical viewfinder, is your diopter adjustment could be a little bit out. Basically what you needed to do is you needed to focus on something at infinity, zoom all the way back, and then set the diopter focus. GCS1 and I'd like to take the map because it uses the same battery and uh, we'll take a look at the difference in the picture quality which we won't because the GCS1 as you will soon see is uh, not functional anymore it decided that it did not want to record it did not want to cooperate even though only a month or so ago when I got it running it was fine but now it doesn't want to cooperate I'll show you what it does because I'm going to put the tape into the GCS1. The GCS1, there you can see it. it's going to shut up. But look at the look at the look at the flowers. I mean, just look at the look at the image. Well, it worked there. You can see the you can see the uh, the color stripe of the, of the, the filter. It's a good example. It only ran for a few seconds and then it shut down. But anyway, this was basically how to rebuild a battery pack. So I was able to put eight double a size nickel metal hydrate into one of these np 11s and make it work so mission accomplished one thing i couldn't help but notice though is that the audio is a bit muffled so i think we'll clean the audio head i haven't done that on this old bmc 110 collector piece the audio head of course is right down here get in here with a q-tip and clean the head and we'll try recording on it didn't look to be dirty but one never knows. We'll just try making a recording and see how the sound is, see if it's any improve imp any improvement over what I was uh, getting on it before. So don't even need to take it out anywhere. We'll just do it right here. Okay, we're making a quick test recording on a, well, 
1985 tape because that's when this was recorded originally the Sony training seminar was on here so it's not like it's a new tape it's an old tape but this part of the tape has never been recorded so clean the audio head we'll see if the uh, sound is improved at all on this recording and then this camera gets put back in its case okay so this is what was on the tape here's the new recording okay we're making a quick test recording on a well 1985 tape because that's when this was recorded originally the sony training seminar was on here so it's not like it's a new tape it's an old tape but this part of the okay tape i think we're okay i think we're sounding good now so clean the audio head we'll see if the uh the sound is improved at all on this recording and then this camera gets put back in its case so that's it it was uh, the audio head was just a bit dirty so that's now good that'll do it for this one thanks for watching